All right. Let's go ahead and stand tonight, if you would. We're going to open up our Christmas program tonight in a word of prayer. If you're visiting tonight, I'm Pastor Chris Hazel. It's a joy to have you with us tonight. Such a great day in the Lord today. Looking forward to a good time tonight. And along with you, this will be the first time that I have actually seen this program, so I'm excited about that. And we're glad you're here. If you're visiting, thank you for coming. And we look forward to seeing what God's going to do in the service tonight. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to first of all take a moment tonight and thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift that was ever given to man. Lord, when you looked down and saw our need and gave us your son, that he died for our sin, Lord, we realize tonight that there is no other way to heaven but the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we are so thankful tonight for that gift wrapped in swaddling clothes laid in a manger. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for the virgin birth, that God became man and dwelt among us. Lord, we pray tonight for those that are participate in the program. Lord, we just pray tonight that you'll bless and touch them, help them recall what they've learned. Lord, I pray you'll bless Brother James and all those that work with him. And Lord, realizing, God, the great effort that went into this tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight for each one's made their way out for every family. We know children tonight, Lord, excited, and Christmas Day coming up here in just a couple days. But, Lord, we realize tonight, Lord, that for a child of God, every day is Christmas Day. For every day, we enjoy, Lord, the fact that your Son is our Savior. Lord, I pray you'll bless tonight's time together. Bless those that go home, the many will be traveling in the next few days. Thank you for the blessings that you're giving us in this church. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated, and I trust you enjoy the service tonight. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you come in. Hello there. Um, I wasn't expecting one until after lunch. But it's all right. Guests are always welcome here at Saunders Engineering. Come on in. I'll show you around. M Mr. Saunders, well, you're looking at him. Everybody around here calls me Bob. Oh, the broom. Well, my doctor said I need to get some kind of regular exercise, so I'm just following orders. You are the ones that wanted to come see our training center. Oh, good, good. Well, we can start our tour in the other building. Mighty proud of our training program. How to get started? Well, it all started about seven years ago when my senior engineer and his family were out delivering Thanksgiving baskets. This must be it, John. It says to turn right on Maple Street. Okay, dear. Look at these houses. Ew, they're creepy. Do people really live here? Everyone lock your doors now. 
Can we go home? Not until we deliver the food. Poor people get hungry too, you know. Who are we looking for, Mom? Well, it says on the card that their name is Johnson. According to the city rescue mission, they're having a pretty tough time. They've got a little girl with spina bifida. What spina? What am I call it? It means they have a baby who's crippled. It says that Mrs. Johnson's been in bad health ever since the baby was born. We sure have a lot to be oh, thankful. Here we are. I was afraid we'd find it. Now let's pray before we go up. Uh, dear Father, help us to be a good testimony to this family and help us to be thankful for all that we have. Amen. Amen. I'll wait here and protect the car. Richard, we're all going to help with the food. One out. Toby, you got the turkey? Got it, Dad. All right. Mom, it stinks out here. Quiet, dear. These people don't know how to keep things clean. Richard, did you get the box of groceries? Got it. Mom, you're not really giving them this blueberry pie, are you? Move I it. thought it was for us. If it smells like this outside, think of what it smells like inside. I'm going to wait in the car. Not in this neighborhood. You're not. Come on. Clothes, pins, anyone? Knock it off, Jess. Just breathe your mouth. Maybe that will keep her quiet. <sighs> Now remember your testimony, kids. Yeah. Oh. What you want? Uh, hello, friend. I'm John Shepard, and this is my wife, Jeannie, and and my children, uh, her children, <coughs> <laughs> our children. Um, <laughs> Richard, Toby, and Jessica. We're from the Open Bible Church, and we just wanted to bring you a little uh, Thanksgiving cheer. So? Uh, so we brought you some groceries from our kitchen to yours. Whatever you say, man. Um, so where would you like us to put all this? Just leave them on the porch here. Refrigerator ain't working. Okay. Um, all right, boys. Put them over there. Um, say, it's sure been nice meeting you. We'd love to have you visit our church sometime. <laughs> that would be the day. Um, well, gang, I guess it's time to get going John, home. John, 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 the tracks. Oh, yeah. Um, say, I have some, some pamphlets I'd like you to read sometime. <laughs> Maybe when you got a spare minute. It, it teaches about God's love and how he sacrificed everything for you and me. Mister, you're living in a dream world. Well, what do you mean? There ain't nobody in this whole universe that don't think about themselves first. But why do you think we're here? That's a good question, lady. Why exactly are you here? Well, because I love you. I'm flattered, but don't you think this is kind of sudden? Uh, I didn't mean it that Sir, way. Sir, I suggest you watch the way you talk listen, to my... Listen, folks, I'm sorry. Thanks for the food. Good night. Can you beat that? I never in all my days have been so humiliated. Come on, kids. Get in the car. <sighs> Toby, get away from that window. I'm going to wait for a week. Rich, where are you going? You think I'm going to leave our pie with that jerk? Get in the car. Gratitude. Dad? Well, I guess you can't expect a whole lot more from people like that. Thanks to FDR, we got a whole generation of people that expect handouts for everything. Right. FDR? Wasn't he shot in Dallas way back in the 60s? Uh, way back? Something that was only like 30 years ago. Besides, that was JFK. Dad? But he was another one of those liberals. Tax and spin, tax and spin. Dad? What is it, son? When the turkey's gone, what will she eat? Well, who? The little girl. What little girl, Toby? I saw her through the window. She's crippled. 
and so thin. She looked cold, too. What will she eat when the turkey's gone? Don't worry about her, son. We have government programs for children like that. But Toby couldn't stop worrying. All night and through the next day, he just kept wondering what would happen to that frail little girl that he'd seen through the window. Several times he tried to talk to his father about her, but his father just assured him that she'd be taken care of. Toby wanted to believe his dad, but the idea occurred to him that nobody seemed to be taking care of her so far. There was only one person Toby could turn to now. Lord, I've got a problem, and I don't know what to do. What would you do if you were here? Wait a minute. The verses I'm learning in the Christmas program say that you humbled yourself and became a servant. Lord, make me just like you. Although Toby had committed himself to helping the little girl, he wasn't quite sure how to go about it. Since his father didn't see the need as he did, Toby decided to seek the advice of someone much older and wiser than himself, his 12-year-old brother. Dickie, Toby, will you quit calling me Dickie? Mom and Dad stopped that stuff five years ago. Okay, Rich. I'm sorry. Dickie! What? <laughs> what? What's going to happen to that little girl? Will you forget it, Toby? We don't even know these people. But Jesus does, and he cares about everybody. That's exactly right, but you're not Jesus. 
But I'm supposed to be like Jesus. This is like talking to a brick wall. I'm going to take home my piggy bank. You can't do that. Why not? Uh, lots of reasons. How would you get there? Uh, I'll walk. You wouldn't make it by next Christmas. Then I'll, I'll ride the bus. You'd wind up in Phoenix or something. You don't know how to ride the bus. Do too. Do not. Do too. How? One time, me and Mom took the bus to the library. How am I supposed to reason with a two-year-old? I am not two years old. Well, you're sure acting like it. Grow up. Get with the program. What do you mean? The government takes care of people like that. Well, then they're not doing a very good job. You're impossible! <laughs> Dickie, you didn't even see that little girl. She needs help. Why can't you just be a normal kid? Big Brother, if you really want to make a difference, you just got to go ahead and be a little different. God commands us to be different, not just a copy of the world. Everything's reversed, putting others first, showing Jesus love, pleasing Christ above. If you're gonna make a difference, you gotta be a little different. I'm not talking about being strange as two left thumbs, but marching to the beat of a different drum. Don't let this world press you into its mold. Go ahead, speak up, stand and be bold. Follow the Lord, trust in his word. Buck the crowd, be a little different. Jesus has given me a new life. Now I'm a servant of the King. Serving day and night, walking in the light, singing a new song, choosing right from wrong. If you're gonna make a difference, you gotta be a little different. I'm not talking about being strange as two left thumbs, but marching to the beat of a different drum. Don't let this world press you into its mold. Go ahead, speak up, stand and be bold. Follow the Lord, trust in his word. Buck the crowd, be a little different. Have you called Aunt Harriet? Maybe he stopped by there on the way home from school. That's the first place I tried. I checked everywhere between here and the school playground. He's not at the donut shop or the ball field, and none of the neighbors have seen him either. John, we have to call the police. You're probably Wait right. Wait a minute. Is Toby's piggy bank gone? What? Why didn't I think of this before? He's run away. Can I have Toby's room? Jessica. Don't you see? Ever since we delivered that Thanksgiving basket, Toby's been babbling about that crippled kid. <sighs> What crippled kid? Boneless spina something. Spina bifida? Yeah, he said he was going to take her his money because she needed help. Toby's the one who needs help. Jessica, go see if Toby's piggy bank is missing. Yes, ma'am. Now don't worry, sweetheart. Toby's probably just playing somewhere with one of his friends. I don't know, Dad. He sounded pretty serious. Oh, John, it's almost 5 o'clock and it's going to be dark soon. Now don't get yourself all worked up. Everything's going to be okay. But, honey, he's only a child. That's my baby. In that part of town, after dark. Oh, John! Go find him, Mom. Toby's piggy bank is gone. Everybody in the car, now.
No time was wasted getting into the car. However, John was in such a hurry backing out of the garage that he backed right into the fire hydrant on the other side of the street. <sighs> this is not my day. Now, dear, I know the car is new, but don't be upset. Everything works together for good. Is it raining? That's not rain, Jessica. Oh, look, the water's shooting 20 feet in the air. How embarrassing. Dad, the trunk popped open. <sighs> How embarrassing. My feet are all wet. There's water all over the floor. It's up to my ankles. <sighs> Jeannie, you take the wheel. Everybody else, out of the car. But I'll get soaked. Now, hurry up, you two, and help me push. They finally got the car moving again, but not before everybody was sopping wet. The trunk wouldn't close, and the water inside the car was four inches deep. The ride across town seemed like it took forever. Even Jessica and Richard were getting a little worried. It was almost dark now. John, I should have called the police before we left the house. Just one more buck and we'll be there. But what if he's been kidnapped? Toby will be fine, Mom. Uh, I don't even know if I told him I loved him this morning. What kind of mother am I anyways? This is all my fault. But you're a great mom. Oh. <sighs> if this is anybody's fault, it's mine. But what do you mean? Well, last night, Toby kept trying to get my attention, but well, I was too busy. I, I was preparing next week's Sunday school lesson, and, well, I kind of raised my voice a little. You yelled, Dad. All right, I yelled. But if we find that precious little boy, I promise I will never get upset at him again. I think I see him. Where? Where is he? Yeah, that's him, skipping down the sidewalk. Oh, praise the Lord. Skipping? How do you like that? Scares the living daylights out of us, ruins our car. I've got a great idea. Uh, are you all right, Dad? <clears throat> Quiet, everyone. What you gonna do? I'm gonna sneak up behind him. Uh, John, I wouldn't. Oh. Wish I had my video camera. Uh, John, he's been taking. Oh, shh. Quiet, Jeannie. Shh. Get that. Look at Toby run. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, Jenny, you better drive. Oh, way to go, oh. Dad. Too bad you didn't have your video camera, huh? Oh, very funny. John, I was trying to tell you that Pastor Bird's been teaching self-defense classes on Thursday nights in Boys Club. Well, uh, it didn't really hurt that much. I'm just trying to boost his confidence a little. Well, you're doing a great job, dear. Well... We'll drive a little faster and we can catch up to him. Whatever you say, dear. <sighs> Toby! Uh, Toby, it's me, Dad! Come on, son. Dad, boy, am I glad to see you. <sighs> Get in the car. This huge, ugly, mean looking guy just tried to attack. Me. Toby, that was... Uh, terrible, son. <sighs> We're glad you're all right. Me too. So hope I didn't hurt him too badly. <laughs> Only his pride, dear. Huh? Uh, never mind that. <sighs> What's all this water in the car and who left the trunk open? Well, don't worry about that. I'll explain everything later. But first... I want you to explain. What are you doing out here all alone? I wanted to see Tessie. Who's Tessie? She's Mrs. Johnson's little girl. 
She's really cute, Dad, and smart, too. She's not a baby like the code said. She's just little and can't walk because she's got a hole in her back. Toby, are you making this up? No, in fact, sometimes Tessie gets too much water in her head, and the doctor has to drain it out. Really? Cross my heart. She's been in the hospital 11 times. Oh, that poor thing. How did you find out all this? Tessie told me after I gave her my piggy bank. You gave Tessie your piggy bank? Yeah, so she'd be able to buy something to eat after the turkey was gone. Son, you've got a soft heart, just like your grandfather. Dad, I've been thinking. Why can't we help the Johnsons? Oh, what do you mean, help? You know, find Mr. Johnson a job. Their house is a mess. Everything's broken. You could fix anything, Dad. Toby, it's not that simple, son. We don't even know these people. <laughs> Mr. Johnson probably doesn't even have a car to get to work. Couldn't you drive him? Oh, son, I I'm glad you have a tender heart, but... What you're suggesting would take a great deal of time and money. Buddy, these people don't even know the basics of personal hygiene. Personal what? She means they're dirty. I was giving that some thought. Mom, since you're such a great housekeeper, couldn't you teach Tessie's mommy how to clean house and stuff? John, you talk to him. Son... What your mother's trying to say is, well, th these people are different than we are. Well, they have no, they have no breeding. Breeding? You mean like Grandpa's cows? So that's why it smells like a barn. Uh, t Toby, uh, we have to be careful with our testimony. These people may have some very bad habits. Son, they're just not like us. I, I see. What is it, Toby? Nothing. What's wrong, bud? I was just thinking about the verses I have to say in the Christmas program. What verses? Something about being like Jesus and humbling ourselves and forgetting our reputations and being servants. Oh. Uh, that's Philippians chapter 2. Hope someday I'm as smart as you, Dad, and can understand what the Bible is talking about. I guess I had it figured out all along. It had been a long evening, and everybody was tired by the time they got back home. Nobody even argued with Dad when he said to get ready for bed. And before long, everyone was sound asleep. Well, almost everyone. John couldn't forget Toby in Philippians chapter 2. And finally, about 2 a.m., he got out his Bible and started reading one scripture after the other. Before long, he was in tears. Dear Lord, I've called myself a Christian for over 30 years, but I am such a hypocrite. You taught us to love others like you did when you were here. Lord, Toby knows more about that than I do. Lord, you were spit on, assaulted, tortured, and even killed. And I feel like I've really sacrificed because I delivered a turkey from the church. Oh, Lord. Please forgive me and help me to live more like you. Holy night, the 
stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine was born Oh night divine Oh night Oh holy night Truly he taught us to love His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord oh praise his name for John was serious about wanting God to change his heart. On Tuesday, on, during his lunch break, he went to the grocery store and grabbed a bunch of groceries, drove over to the Johnson's house. He knocked on the door, but he couldn't get anyone to answer, so eventually he just let himself in. The living room was completely dark except for the light of the TV, which was blaring loudly. The floors were covered with trash, and there were cockroaches everywhere. On a small mattress lay a dirty, frail little girl, about five years old. Her hair was long and matted, and she had on a large, dirty T-shirt. Her feet were blue with cold. Mrs. Johnson was asleep on the mattress beside her daughter, and her husband, Pete, was sitting on the floor in front of the TV. John had never seen such human misery. That evening, he came back with his whole family. After giving Tessie some warm pajamas, John fixed the refrigerator, and Jeannie prepared dinner. Richard, Jessica, and Toby started the long process of cleaning up the house. The next morning, John paid a visit to my office. 
And at that time, Ebenezer Scrooge and I had a lot in common. In just seven years, my company had grown from just one employee to over 100. I was rich, frugal, and proud of it. As much as I hated to admit it, a major part of my company's success was due to the work of my senior engineer, John Shepard. Although I enjoyed kidding him about his religious habits, I suppose he was the closest thing I had to a friend. Morning, Bob. Do you have a minute? Hey, right, come on in. Hey, I love the new design. It's perfect. Like I always say, if you want it done right, give it to John. Uh, yeah, thanks, Bob. Uh, say, I had something I wanted to ask you about. Shoot. Well, you know, since we've moved in this new building, I mean, we've spent a lot on custodial services. <sighs> Nobody's more aware of that than I am. Um, so maybe it's time we hired a full-time custodian. Not a bad idea. You got somebody in mind? Uh, dependable help is hard to find these days. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, okay, good. Well, if he's good for you, he's hired. Um, I'm afraid it's not quite that easy. Uh, huh? Well, uh, he's not dependable. He has no skills. And honestly, I, I can't think of one positive thing to say about him. But... I'm willing to stick on him like glue to make sure he follows through. Are you serious? I'm afraid so. Well, what's this guy to you? Well, he's who I might be, but for the grace of God. Well, if it were anybody else, I'd laugh him right out of the office. But if this is going to satisfy some religious whim for you, well, be my guest. But I'm going to hold you responsible for anything that happens. Yes, sir. You won't regret this, I hope. Oh, uh, one more thing. Um, I worked out a budget for his salary. You thought of everything, didn't you? Yes, sir. Um, I know it might be a little steep, but he's got a lot of medical bills, and well, I'm willing to take a 10% decrease in my salary to cover it. You would do that for some derelict? <laughs> Bob, the Lord's really convicted me of my sins. I don't, I don't believe this. You spend more time at church than I do at home. Do you know what the other engineers call you? St. John. Now, if you're a sinner, I'm the Easter Bunny. <laughs> well, Bob, going to church doesn't make anybody a good Christian. The only way to become God's child is to trust Christ, accept God's free gift of salvation. By God's grace, I've done that. Well, that's more like it. But what's this, what's the hassle about? Bob, when Christ was on earth, he gave everything he had, his time, his money, even his life for others. And he commands his followers to do the same, to love sinners just like he did. John, if I ever saw a Christian like that, I'd be tempted to become one myself. What kind of preacher's been filling your head with these notions? <laughs> well, it's, it's no theologian, Bob. It's just an eight-year-old boy. Huh. I'll tell you what. About that pay cut, I think I can spring for this. Wouldn't want you to become a martyr. Well, not yet. But Thank you. remember, I'm holding you personally responsible for this new guy. Thank you, sir. Finding Pete Johnson a job, well, that turned out to be the easy part. Teaching him the value of hard work, that was going to take a little more effort.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know? The blind, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Morning, Pete. Thought you might want some help shoveling the snow off your drives and walks. Why? Oh, you wouldn't want the mailman to slip. He might sue. Huh. I'd lose my Rolls Royce. <laughs> You've got a real sense of humor there, Pete. Yeah. Well, let's get to work. I brought an extra I ain't got shovel. no coat. Oh, well, brought an extra. No gloves. Oh, um, let's see. Yeah. No problem. Got an extra pair. I don't suppose you got an extra um, hat. Oh, one hat. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. All right. You need to be ready to start work Monday. So this Saturday, I want to pick you up, and we're going to spend our, our week at the custodial service. They're going to show us how to do everything. Now I'll pick you up at 7.15. Whoa, whoa, 7.15? Well, 
Yeah, I'm always in the office by 7.30. Well, the early bird gets the worm. I don't want no worms. Well, <laughs> haven't you ever seen a sunrise? No. If God wanted me to see the sunrise, he'd have scheduled it at noon. <laughs> but I'll pick you up at 7.15. Whatever you say, man. They shoot people at sunrise. I bought you some boots and some coveralls. Next Saturday, we're going to spend the, spend the week, uh, weekend at the landscaping company. They're going to show us how to take care of the grounds. Any questions? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Well, because I'm a Christian. Everybody who comes to my door says they're a Christian, but they just as soon spit on me as look at me. Yeah, they bring us food at Christmas and Thanksgiving, but they don't do it for us. They do it so they'll feel good inside. They ain't gonna miss what they give us anyway. You and that kid here is Toby are the first people who really seem to... Nah, forget about it. Look, I know your wife hasn't been feeling well, so my wife and kids are gonna come by tomorrow to help with this housework. And I've got a guy coming by this afternoon to take a look at the leaks in your roof. But I ain't got no money. Oh, don't worry about that. He will bill me, and you can pay me back when you get your first paycheck. Thanks, man. Say, Pete, hmm? have you thought about going to get your high school diploma? No. <laughs> I already tried night classes. Well, what happened? Well, you got to learn English first, and me and English ain't got nothing in common. I'd never have guessed. Huh? <laughs> oh, um, listen, Pete. I put myself through grad school teaching bonehead English to college freshmen. As of this moment, you've got a private But John, tutor. I just ain't smart enough. I'm not smart enough. Well, if you ain't smart neither, then what makes you think you can teach me? Twas the season to be jolly, but for the Shepherd family, it was the season for work. John's biggest job was getting Pete out of bed every morning. Jeannie picked up the children after school each day and headed for the Johnsons with the car loaded with food, brooms, mops, soap, and plenty of air freshener. They weren't going to have the time this year to make all the fancy baked goods they usually made or to comb the malls for all those special gifts for each other. And yet, as the music of Christmas began to be heard everywhere, they felt more in the spirit of Christmas than they ever had before. I hadn't expected John's religious experiment to last more than a week, but nearly four weeks had passed since John had asked me to hire Pete, and I saw no signs of his giving up. What surprised me even more was the change I, change I saw taking place in Pete Johnson, and it irritated me. I really don't know why. I suppose I always had the hypocrisy of Christians as an excuse for my own rejection of Christ. But here was a Christian who was willing to sacrifice a great deal in order to make a difference in one man's life. And he stood to gain nothing in return. As long as I live, I'll never forget that one frosty December morning as I was gazing out my office window at all the dreary, lifeless snow and ice. The realization suddenly hit me. The most desolate thing of all on that bleak winter's morn was my cold, cold heart. Jesus came as a baby one day God's plan would be this way He was wrapped in swaddling clothes Placed in a manger filled with hay The shepherds came to meet Him To worship Christ the Lord In Bethlehem Christmas all began. The wise men traveled far, 
by following a star. They brought him gifts for a king, bringing gold and precious things. As we open up our presents underneath the Christmas tree, the greatest gift came to set us free. He came to be the gift of life, to die upon a tree, shed his blood for our sins, to pay the penalty, the precious Lamb of God chose to die in our place. So Christmas time we celebrate God's grace. Early every Christmas morn, we gather around the tree. May we never forget the price Christ paid on Calvary. Help us to remember each gift that we receive. The greatest gift comes to all who believe. When we look up at our tree and our presence that we see, may we remember what it means and not forget what he did for me. While we gather round for Christmas, sharing gifts of joy and love, we're thankful for what Christmas means to us. We're thankful for what Christmas means to us. Uh, morning, Bob. You oh. wanted to see me? Yeah, John. Uh, have a seat. Um, you guys heading out of town tomorrow? Uh, no, we're we're going to spend home uh, Christmas at home this year. Oh, good. Uh, was that it? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, no. Um, uh, maybe this is a bad time. It's about Pete. Oh. oh. Is there a problem? No, 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 quite the contrary. Oh, uh, God, yeah. He's far exceeded all my expectations. Uh, I, I just, I, I know it's, you know, still kind of early. It's only been, what, six weeks or so. I know he's got a lot to learn. Never seen such a change in a guy's attitude. Um, I gotta hand it to you. I, that first day when you brought him in here, he moved slower than a turtle with four broken legs. <laughs> but over the past couple of weeks, I've seen some real light in his eyes. I haven't caught him sleeping on the job, and he's shown some real initiative. I'm glad you're pleased. Was there anything else? Um, do you remember when I told you that if I ever saw a real Christian, I'd be tempted to become one? I've seen one. What do you mean? It might surprise you to know this, but 
I grew up in a real religious home. Went to church every Sunday, read the Bible. But I bailed out a long time ago. I just couldn't understand how a God who had everything could give everything to someone who deserved absolutely nothing. I've met hundreds of so-called Christians who live just the way I do. I've spent my whole life making money that I can't take with me. But this Christmas begins a new life for me because I've seen God's love for the first time. Oh, that's wonderful, Bob. I trusted Christ last night because I saw Jesus in you. glory and I see my Savior's face I will offer him ten thousand years of praise then I'll find that special one in whose eyes I saw God's Son and through tears of joy with trembling lips these words i'll say i saw jesus in you i saw jesus in you i could hear his voice in the words you said I saw Jesus in you, in your eyes I saw his care, I could see his love was there, you were faithful, and I saw Jesus in you. When I stand before my Father to receive my life's reward and my soul is bathed in God's eternal day, when my race on earth is run and God sees the works I've done more than anything I long to hear my father say I saw Jesus in you I saw Jesus in you I could hear his voice in the words you said I saw Jesus in you in your eyes I saw his care I could see his love was there you were faithful and I saw Jesus in you you were faithful and I saw Jesus in you No one who had ever seen the Johnson's house before would have recognized it this Christmas Eve. From the gleaming lights and the crystal clear clean windows to the aroma of fresh baked cinnamon rolls, 
nothing was quite the same. The Shepherd family, by unanimous vote, had agreed to go without presents for themselves this year. Instead, there was a heaping pile of presents underneath the beautiful tree in the Johnson's living room. After dinner, Pete asked John if they could take a walk. I can't believe all this happened in the last few weeks. God has sure been good to all of us, hasn't he? He sure has. But this, all this food and proper clothing, Tessie ain't the same kid. She isn't the same. She sure ain't. <laughs> that boy of yours, Toby, he puts a smile on everybody's face every time he comes to the door. My little buddy, Toby. I feel like a man for the first time in my life. I got a good paying job and can finally take care of my family. Can't believe how fast you're learning. Mr. Saunders says he's going to pay for the night school I want to take. He's even talking about giving me a raise. He's a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah. I always took him to be kind of a Scrooge type of guy, but now that I'm getting to know him, he reminds me more and more of you. No, oh, no. Pete, have you thought any more about John 3.16? Strange thing about it. I've heard that verse lots of times before you quoted it to me, but... Never met anybody who made me want to listen to it before. Well, it's not me, Pete. That's the still, small voice of God's Holy Spirit inside of you. Really? Yes. The Lord Jesus wants to live in your heart. Imagine that. Christ inside of me. Pete Johnson. Well... That's about it. Pete was the beginning of our training center, and the rest, as they say, is history. God just keeps bringing along one person after another who needs help. Many of them turn out to be real dependable workers. Oh, did Pete trust Christ? Well, I get that question every time I tell this story. But before I answer it, let me ask you a question. Should John feel like his time was wasted if Pete didn't trust Christ? I don't think so. Jesus only had 12 disciples, and one of them was a failure. But even I like a happy ending. So let me introduce you to my training center manager. Hey, Pete, come on in here. I've got some people I want you to meet. Let's all stand our feet tonight, if you would. For just a moment, every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to share a couple things with you tonight. Then we'll introduce the cast of the program and the director and so forth. But for just a moment tonight, the reason that we're having this program on this night instead of last Sunday night was because of a group of college career age people that went on a mission trip to Columbia and had to take their time to do that. The director of this program tonight was also sort of the leader of that trip. And it's all about service. It's all about you giving your life for somebody else. The reason I stand here tonight as a Christian is because somebody cared, somebody gave, somebody invited me to trust him as my Savior. And all of you that are gathered here tonight, somebody loves you. Somebody tonight in this auditorium would want to share the greatest gift with you that anybody could ever give. I want you to know tonight that Jesus loved you beyond what human man could ever do. He gave his life. 
He said he came to minister, not to be ministered unto. One of the greatest attributes of the Son of God was he was a servant. That's why he came. I wonder just a moment, with every head bowed in this auditorium, would you look at your life just a moment? Has there been that time in your life that you trusted Christ as your Savior? Do you know him as your Lord? If you don't, I want to say this to you. The single greatest decision that I ever made in my life was when I gave my life to Christ. It changed me. It gave me peace, joy. It gave me hope. I wonder tonight, and we won't have an invitation tonight where you'll walk forward, but I would love to pray for you tonight. I wonder if you're in this auditorium tonight with every head bowed. And I see several of you wiping tears tonight. Because when it dawns on you how much Jesus loves you, it just changes everything. I wonder tonight if you'd say, Preacher, would you remember me in prayer? If I were to pillow my head tonight, I don't know 100% for sure that I'm ready to meet the Lord. And if you could just remember my face, if you could remember me tonight when you pray, would you pray for me? And I want to say this, I'm not asking you that to embarrass you, to call you forward. I do believe the Lord will let me remember your face, and I would love to pray for you. I'd even love to speak to you sometime if you would allow. But I wonder right now across this auditorium if someone would say, Preacher, would you remember me? Would you remember me? I need Christ in my life. I need him. Would you slip your hand up right now while every head's bowed? And just put it right back down. Could I pray for you just right now? Preacher, if I died right now, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. But I'd like for you to remember me in prayer. Would you slip it up? I want to wait a minute because I know several of you are thinking, could he really change me? The answer tonight is yes. Would you slip it up and let me pray for you? You put it right back down. I will not come to you, but I want to pray for you. Thank you so much. Don't you look at me, everyone, just a minute. We'll pray for those tonight that need the Lord. But I want you to listen to me. The greatest joy in the Christian life is service. The county you stand in tonight has 300 children homeless. I spoke to an officer the other day and he said to me, he said, preacher, it's not the children's fault. He said, Preacher, some people would rather spend money on crack cocaine, marijuana, and alcohol while their kids go without. But I will say something to you. That's the people just like me that Jesus died for. You know the only difference between myself and someone tonight that's on skid row of this county is Christ. 
I think it'd do the church well to learn to be servants. What a great representation of that tonight. And by the way, there's a lot of times children are the ones that remind us, Daddy, what can we do for them? Mama, what can we do for them? Well, it's their fault they're in that place. It might be. But I got news for you. Where would you be if Christ hadn't changed your life? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Amy. I want you to look this way just a moment. Brother James, I want you to come up. Let's give Brother James Paquette a hand tonight. <laughs> Brother James is uh, the director, our music leader here at Calvary. He's the one that put all of this together tonight along with help from folks that I'm going to let him introduce. But I want you real quick, I want you to bring up the cast tonight, everybody that had a part in it tonight, and let everybody, a lot of visitors tonight may not know him, Brother James, so you call them up here and let's see who they are tonight, maybe who they played tonight yeah. in their name. All right? Absolutely. We'll start, with, uh, we'll start with Jenny, Richard, and Jessica. You guys will come on out. This is uh, Gabrielle Dersham played Jenny uh, Shepherd. We had uh, Isabella Zittle playing Jessica Shepherd and Timothy uh, Whitley uh, playing the part of Richard. Let's give them a hand. They did an awesome job. Um, Pete Johnson. Pete Johnson was played by Christian Tony. Let's give him a hand. Bob was played by uh, Mr. Steve Zittle. He's the Sunday school teacher for our class. Did an awesome job. Um, John Shepard was played by Jonathan Brown. Did an awesome job tonight. And then our little star of our show, little Toby, was played by Caleb Zittle. Did an awesome job. Then all of our musicians, I want y'all to come up too. You put a lot of work into this as well. Miss Amy and her kids, uh, she has a little Brianna and Abby. They did an awesome job singing tonight. Miss Sellers, come on up. She sang Oh Holy Night. And then we had uh, my mom, uh, the most special one here. My mom uh, and my wife, my wife. She's helping in the back. I need to get her here in a second. Come on up. Uh, and then Anna was part of the, the singing as well. And then Elena. Come on. Everybody else came up. Don't make it all about you. Come on. Yeah, and then the most important person, my wife, Kristen, was helping us behind the scenes tonight. I helped everything flow very well. Let's give her a hand. Did an awesome job. I don't think I met. There's a lot of sound guys, light guys, camera guys back in the back. Did an awesome job. Had a lot of help. Brother Doug Elliott put a whole lot of work into this as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, you know, it just takes somebody to, to whip everybody else, but I certainly can't do it all by myself. So thank you so much. All right. Let's give them all another big hand tonight. Good and loud. Let's give them that if you enjoy that tonight. Brother James, you come just a moment. Kristen, you come down here. Brother Crabtree, you and Miss Norma, if you'd make your way up here, please. Miss Wendy, if you come up tonight. And uh, our youth pastor, uh, he would be here. He was watching a while ago. He sent me a text, but I don't think he slept in three days. And I think Mama's sleeping, and now he's got three youngins, and one of them's brand new. He told me today, I told him, I said, Brother Justin, stay home. And he said, thank you for mercy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, just Part of our church staff There's a lot of people here. Brother James leads our music. Brother Crabtree is our associate pastor. Myself and Miss Wendy. And then, of course, uh, Brother Kimmer. Uh, a lot of people make up this ministry. But we just want to tell all of you that we hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas. And I want to say I've, I could not be more proud. I am amazed at this precious young man and the talent and the ability he has to get a car in this auditorium <laughs> without me knowing. Oh, are y'all going to give me the keys now? Uh, you have to talk to somebody else about that. It's not mine. <laughs> but it so that's really not my car? It can be yours for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quickly. The reason we got Kristen to play the part of someone that doesn't do any well on English, he didn't have to act. And... Uh, <laughs> So, so we're glad of that. But uh, anyway, we just want to thank all of you tonight. I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas. I know there are people in this auditorium tonight, and you're struggling with your relationship with the Lord. I know it's a different environment 
different setting. But I want to tell you this. When you celebrate Christmas, don't ever forget. God didn't love you while you straightened everything up. He loved you when he was still messed up. And I'm glad that he does. Amen. It's good to have Chaplain Iredale County, Andrew, over here with us tonight. I work with him in the chaplain program. The reason I say that tonight, there'll be a lot of first responders, fire, emergency, police, that will be working tomorrow and Christmas Day away from their families. All of our military, we've got several in our church military. Some of them actually got to come in just recently. They'll be serving their country during this time. So don't forget to pray and thank God for every one of them. Thank God for those who serve. Amen. I'm going to let the cast stay up here. And uh, we have, I've wanted for years to have a good drama team with the church. And I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good little group right here. And Miss Robin, she's all drama. Amen. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, and y'all do pray for her. She is now leading the music over at the Statesville Christian School, uh, Southview Christian School Choir. And uh, she's working with her music over there now. So they'll be whipped into shape now. I guarantee you that. But uh, anyway, if you want to come by and speak to them, do me a favor tonight as you're leaving. We'll put a lot of people on White's Mill Road every time we have service. Please take your time going out. Watch yourself as you're going across here and taking out on Shelton Avenue. I would go 35. Amen. If not, you can contribute to the fun, but I would go 35 when you're leaving. But a lot of children, a lot of them are so excited. And I don't know who that was, Sister Siddle back there helping sing along with all of them, but we're going to get that voice. Amen. That was good behind me tonight. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for being here. How many of you enjoyed the program? Is it great tonight? Let's give them a hand one more time tonight. All right, we're going to close in a word of prayer this evening. Have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Be safe. And church, uh, we need to do one thing. We have to get our missions offering, if you have that tonight, for our missionaries. It's not church. It's for missionaries around the world. Fellas, if y'all come on. i tell you what, Brother Mike, let's do like you said. Start from the back. We'll do that. We're going to pray. This is just for membership of our church. But we take up our mission offering on Sunday night. And the reason we can't skip that is because we support 200 missionaries around the world. And we need to get that money so we can get that to them all around the world. So Miss Amy is going to play for us. Brother James, you want to lead us in a song that's easy, something everybody might know? Sure, joy, uh, to joy to the world. Come on up, Miss Amy will play that. Fellas, y'all go and start taking up the offering, then we'll close in prayer right after this. I'm going to mess it up now that I said it's going to be easy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Let's go back to that first. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sings. And heaven and nature sings. And heaven and heaven and nature sings. All right, while they're finishing up, Brother Justin Woolard, you make your way up here, please. Brother Justin, he's not on staff with us far here as uh, every day, but he's just like Brother James. He and Miss Natalie, Brother Justin, takes care of our super church, the children at Calvary, the Bible College at Calvary, and a very busy young man. Brother Justin, here's what's exciting to me. Tonight when I came in, a dad called me over, and his son began to quote Psalm 1 to me right down through the Bible. 
And then his dad looked at me and he said, you know where he learned that, preacher? He said, right through those double doors back there in the back. I want to thank you for all you do for our kids. He's a big part of our church staff. He and Brother uh, James work full-time jobs. Brother Dermot and I, we don't do anything. And it works out. But uh, anyway, uh, I do appreciate uh, Brother Justin. And uh, he's going to close us in a word of prayer tonight. But I appreciate it. If you haven't noticed around Calvary, we love young people. Amen. And uh, our teens will be leaving next Sunday. I uh, headed to youth meeting in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We're going to bring the new year in up in Pigeon Ford. So we're looking forward to that. Close us in a word of prayer tonight. You come by, speak to these folks, tell them you appreciate the great job they did tonight. Father, thank you for the great evening. God, I thank you for the work. God, I thank you for all those involved. God, but I thank you for the message. God, I thank you for the challenge, God, to be an example for Christ. God, to lose our reputation to be a servant. God, I pray for those that may be here tonight, God, that are not saved. God, I pray, Lord, they'd see a difference. God, I pray they'd see their need of a Savior. God, I thank you for this Christmas season, for sending your Son. God, I thank you for all that you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.